Hello, Claire here. Today's the day. You can finally stop asking me to show you my versions of the Disney princesses in casual outfits. Brick of motion. Originally, I wanted to make the outfits look exactly like in the Wreck-It Ralph 2 movie. However, <laughs> there were a few obstacles. First of which was, I couldn't get good enough screen caps of each individual princess, so to see which colors is she wearing, how long the things are, what the pattern might be, etc. There was a collection of dolls, like real dolls, not the mini kind, which were dressed as the princesses from the movie. And then I saw that Belle has golden pants. Lego doesn't make golden pants. And one of the constrictions I have made for myself was that I can take any mini doll and make her sit down without that peeling off the paint. That meant I would have to use the pants color that Lego already makes. And gold isn't among them. And now I will finally show you the process for all of them, starting with Aurora. Obviously, if you're gonna paint something, you need to have a base. So this is my in-between step, from here to here. Most of the outfits consist of tights and a shirt. For Aurora, it was important that she keeps her pink color scheme, alternating only between pink and magenta. Magenta highlights! Well, they aren't really highlights if they're covering the majority of the doll, right? So just forget I said anything. Now, a comfy outfit does not include boots. And that's what the original Lego legs piece had. So I had to remove them. And by remove them, I mean paint over them with a skin color that matches the princess and then paint on some more comfy shoes. This is a process that is going to get repeated many a time. But removing the boots was not enough because that would make the leggings a bit too short for my taste. So here's my brilliant solution to that problem. I would give everyone a border, a shiny border. <laughs> and we're not done yet. In the same color, I'm going to put a line on each side of the leggings. This makes the outfit shine, sparkle. And because I'm going to repeat that process on other princesses, it will make all of the outfits more cohesive. I'm such a genius. <laughs> Now, Aurora's shirt is pink with magenta stripes and has Nap Queen written on it. Let me just say, I love it. I just wasn't sure if I was going to be able to write it in gold on the shirt so the letters look nice. So I decided to take that concept of the Nap Queen and turn it into a picture with letters. Yeah, the logic is a bit flawed there, but what I did was paint three Z's, which is a letter that appears above your head when you're sleeping in comics and some cartoons. And then I drew a little crown on top of it. So proud of myself. So now my Aurora is the queen of Z's and every new parent on the planet is jealous of her. Next, I want to talk about Belle. I already told you that she might be the biggest reason why I decided to go on a more creative route than just copying the outfits from the movie, because I had no golden pants. Now Lego sometimes cheats and uses tan instead of gold when they don't have the particular part in gold. And if it's good enough for Lego, it will be good enough for me and Belle. To compensate for the non-goldiness, she too got the shiny border and stripes on the sides. Now for the shirt. In the movie, she wears a shirt with the silhouette of Beast's head and BFF written on it. And then beneath it, there's an explanation of what that means. Beast friends forever. Why are you giving me an abbreviation if you're then going to explain it? Then you could have just written that thing by itself. Maybe it's just me. It most likely is just me. 
but that kind of thing bothers me. I like to be short and on point, she says and continues on to ramble. Anyhow, I decided to be well, not that imaginative with this particular torso and just glue on a golden rose sticker. Golden because it matches the rest of the outfit and the rose because the rose was a big part of that movie. Not the best of the bunch, so we should just move on to something more interesting, like Elsa. In the movie, Elsa wears a shirt that says, let it go. How imaginative and boring and awesome and I can't paint letters. So I got her a snowflake sticker. That's still on point, right? I mean, it definitely looks better than if I had tried to actually write Let It Go with those blocky, highly straight letters. Also, quick side note here, it took me a while to get her pants right. What I mean by that is when I was looking for the parts I was going to paint, I wanted to use this one, but at the time I could only get it from a Farron figure and that was neither cheap nor easy to combine, so I ended up ordering 30 of these pants from a seller somewhere in the world because that, that, that's what made the most sense to me. And those pants did come in handy later on as well. Did I mention that I'm working on this video for over a year now? And if I do Elsa, you know I have to do Anna next. There are a few things with Anna that I need to bring your attention to. First and foremost, her shirt in the movie says we finish each other's and then there's a sandwich, which is a line from the song she sang with Hans. I'm trying to imagine in what universe I would want to wear a shirt that reminds me of that time I got engaged to a guy that wanted to kill my whole family. Well, the rest of your family, because their parents are dead. I don't think I would want to wear a reminder of that particular part of my history. So instead, I drew on Olaf. Do you want to build a snowman? Even though my Olaf looks a bit elongated, it's fine. At least it's not a freaking mass murderer. And another thing with Anna is that in her comfy version, she has only two pigtails. No hat, no bun, no nothing else. So I painted this hairpiece to match her hair color. And I didn't forget to give her the white streak, which in LEGO colors is translated into a light yellow. And I learned a valuable lesson about keeping painted parts that have finish on them, touching each other for long periods of time. You know what happens? They stick to each other. And then when you tear them apart, one of those parts loses the color. That's what happened with Anna's hair. And I couldn't be bothered to paint that over and delay this video for another year. Rapunzel has a slightly different color scheme in the movie. For me, it was a bit too pink purplish, could that be? But when I found that I had these pants that I wouldn't have to paint at all, it was a sign from the universe that I needed to change the color scheme to this. And I have to say that I love it. I love the stripes on the sides of her jacket and instead of the ugly duckling shirt, which you wouldn't have been able to see here anyways, I painted something on her back. I painted the flower that gave Rapunzel her magical powers. I think the flower looks excellent and I actually think that's an added bonus that the flower gets covered up if you put on the hair piece. Because the flower did get destroyed before Rapunzel got her powers. So that's some great symbolism right there. Tiana had NOLA written on it, which stands for New Orleans, which is a thing that I had to Google, and it consists of letters, so I wasn't too keen on doing that for her shirt. Luckily for me, she was standing on my display case right next to Aurora, who is the queen of Z's. Ha! Huh. You know what Tiana is the queen of? Cooking. And again, I wasn't gonna write that down. I painted a spoon and a fork 
and put a crown on top of them. I think it's one of those things that once you know it, you see it. And that's good enough for me for now. <laughs> Comfy Tiana likes to let her hair do its own thing. But actually fairly surprising is that LEGO does not make these hair pieces in black. Dark brown or dark orange, sure, but no black. Never mind that, it's painted now and it was only in black, so that didn't take a year. <laughs> and I really love how the whole doll comes together. Pocahontas. Her pants in the movie have some seriously good printing, which, again, I wasn't going to repeat. But you know what I was gonna repeat? My same old, same old recipe for Disney Princess comfy tights. Put some shine onto it and everything will be fine. Her movie shirt had a wolf howling at the blue corn moon, with the blue corn moon written below it. Disney, why you do that? I do like the wolf, don't like the words, but I wasn't going to paint a wolf. I like the colors of the wind phrase much more, as you might already be aware of from my previous videos. Anyhow, I found this amazing nail sticker sheet and I decided to use a tiny part of it, which reminded me of the colors of the wind. She also has a shirt peeking out from under and it's magenta. Magenta highlights! Yes! I did get to say it. Snow White is a great example of what I do when there are no yellow pants when you need them. You get the skirt. So she gets her leggings underneath the skirt. It does look cute though. And I'm very proud to say that the shirt is definitely inspired by the movie one. I just left out the word poison because duh! I don't need the picture and the word. So I just painted on the picture, which looks absolutely great. One of my best works. And just for the added bonus, I also reddened her hair bow. And yeah, it's interesting how the sandwich with Anna has bothered me, but the poisoned apple does not, even though her parents are also dead. It's weird how some things bug you and others don't. I choose to believe that she is taking her power back with this shirt. Like, I got poisoned, but I survived. And I will like apples, even though they try to kill me. Fruits and veggies are good for you kids. Jasmine! In the movie, her shirt says three wishes. You know, because Aladdin got the three wishes. She has a perfectly good pet tiger at home. And you know what tigers do? Roar! That's why she has roar written on her shirt. Yes, I know it's a text, I am aware. But you can also see that compared to Snow White, this is not the greatest artwork ever. It's just fitting. I'm also using one of the hair pieces where I blinged up the jewel on her hairband a bit. Never too much shine. Mulan is the second of two princesses where I then have to paint the legs. Before you even ask, all of the torsos are painted. And here I got to show off a little. Instead of giving her a shirt with Mushu on it, I decided that her jacket should have two tiny dragons on the left and on the right. And I think they look absolutely amazing. What amazes me even more, how symmetrical I have managed to make them. Remember, these are hand-painted with a brush and a toothpick. My greatest painting tool of them all. And I have not yet shown you the best part, which is... Huh? Huh? Ain't that a gorgeous dragon? Inside a circle. A freaking circle! This made me believe I can draw anything. Which made me tackle on Merida. On the back of her shirt is a picture of a bear roaring with the caption Mum. Here I let that pass because bear and mum are not the same thing. So are you ready now? Did I paint the bear? Did I? Did I? No, no, I, I did not. No. 
but I did give her a bow and arrow, which is nice. And in front she is wearing her family insignia as a pendant, which I feel is a nice touch. You can't miss that I also painted her hair, because the original hair was too dull for Merida's very lively personality. This now is a much better fit, I feel. What you might not notice is that I painted her shoes as well, and she does have some shoelaces, but it's brown on brown and you can barely see them. I did manage to get a bear joke in, <laughs> Ariel! Let me tell you a tale of woe. In the movie, Ariel wears tealish, dark greenish shorts. And you know in which color the Lego shorts don't come in? Hmm. So I settled for light green and thought, yeah, that could be enough if I sand off all of the edges and pockets and my soul then maybe it could look like the shorts she is wearing, uh, but they didn't. However, my local store had a sale of nail polishes. I'm always looking for new ways to paint the mini dolls, and there it was, just sitting there on the shelf, calling to me. The nail polish Mermaid Sparkles. I bought it together with some other painting supplies, and I decorated the shorts in a way which would still allow her to sit down but would also give her the mermaidy sparkles vibe. And I must say, I am very pleased with how it turned out in the end. Always remember, it's okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. In mini doll painting, meaning you still have some work to do. Her movie shirt had a wall of text on it, so you know I wasn't gonna paint it, but I had some nice looking stickers that I felt were fitting so I glued them on. They're supposed to symbolize how she loves the sea, even though she chose to live on land. So, heart, sea, you get what I was going for. Now, did I succeed? You'll let me know. Moana! Moana's outfit was fairly simplistic, not that much painting to do, except that I had to paint carefully around her amulet, so to not obscure it. In the movie, she's wearing a picture of Tomatoa with the words shiny. He tried to eat her. Wh why? <laughs> and her parents are alive and very well, thank you for asking. But her grandma's dead. I still do like the song shiny and the whole concept of it, so I took the shiny part and took the heart part from the heart of Tefiti and I made a shiny heart. I mean, it's not that clever, but I do like it. And I added some shine on her back as well. When you're going shiny, then go full on shiny. Only Cinderella left. Now here's a great example of how you do the artwork on the shirt. The movie shirt had her pumpkin carriage on it with the inscription G2G, which translates into got to go. That's how you do prints on shirts. Don't know what prevented you to do that with the others as well. But back to Cindy. In my version, Cindy just gets the carriage because again, letters, so tiny, no. But I added a bit of sparkle again. Does that save me? This might be the outfit that is most recognizable as an outfit of a princess, so I think it's great. So now that I have talked about all of them extensively, it is time to give them their own space. Inside of this display castle. But I'll do it in another video, together with how my daughter improved on this design. Until the next time you click on one of my videos, Bye-bye.